new. I used to work at Reuters for a long time, which is how I started doing this. And that's why, I'm, I mean, I'm an artist as well, so who are you going to ask to come on your show? You want to ask somebody who's painting or working with a subject matter that you can get stuck into. And so when I saw Annie's work, I thought I have to ask her on the show and I have to talk to her about her work because, I mean, obviously, the news or media is full of royals. I mean, even if we were in, say, like a, a left-wing arty media and we might sort of laugh at the royals, I mean, it's just full of people thinking about them and talking about them. Did you know that... I, I can't remember what year it was. There was a there was a documentary, a, a style of documentary. Everybody was talking about it, but the documentary that got the most watches was David Starkey and his um, his royal documentary. And that woman, what's the name? Who's um, the blonde woman? What's the yes, name? Mary. No. <laughs> no. Who talks about uh, the Lips. royal? Susanna Lipscomb. Lucy Worsley. Lucy Worsley. That I'm thinking of. You know. I mean, I know lots of men who really find her very attractive, and who talk to me who are um, on the left wing. So even if you know we're not so sort of super into the royals ourselves, there they are. They are on the telly. They are and now. When so when. Um, I saw Annie's pictures uh, about the, the painting of the world. I, there was so much to look at and think about. I obviously am very entranced with the fact that she's using the fine art paintings and that we have this melding together that gives like a really interesting juxtaposition inside the paint. I'm obviously very impressed and delighted with the colour and the techniques and the consistency as well that round the room and the paintings that comes from somebody who is a professional artist. But yes, the subject matter. The royals. It's strange, isn't it? I mean, here we are. We think that being modern is about getting rid of the royals, some of us. But we haven't got rid of the royals. What a flipping time we are in, in a way. They are, they are our head of state as well. You know, they're symbols of this country. And even if we want to um, pull them down, there they are. And there they are all the time. And they're a soap opera as well. I mean, I, I don't know what you feel about it, but they, they seem everywhere. And they seem stronger than ever as characters. Um, and we know them as people as well, don't we? I mean, uh, this one that uh, Annie got into a lot of controversy for, uh, particularly, this is, her, uh, I guess, the most media controversial painting of hers to date, which is Char uh, Prince Charles pushing the Queen Mother off uh, a chariot because obviously he wants to get the throne, or this is the subtext here. And I think it's, you know, people didn't like that. They didn't like that at all, uh, because it's showing uh, this violent division and um, also an attack on the Queen. So uh, please do have a look at it and see what you think about it. Has it? Well, we also have um, some politicians who have crept into this royal show as well. I mean, do you know this one here? Can you tell who this is? Because this is the one that I actually couldn't tell who it is. With mostly cameras. Which one? The orange one is uh, David Cameron. It's David Cameron, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's something very strange is happening. He's being overwhelmed. And it is very modern because, look, it's orange. And it's, it's, these are the kind of the colour codes that you see on a lot of films these days when they are um, when colour graded for uh, the television. Have a look out for that orange and this kind of teal. It's a really common colour grading that's done on, on the internet these days. And George Osborne, he's got this very modern, uh, in the sense of it's ubiquitous at the moment, colour grading thing happening. And they, they've crept in, there's Boris and there's Trump. They've crept in because they're like kind of royals without being royals, aren't they? And they're, they're these characters who are power associated with power who are going around affecting everything about us. In some ways they are more powerful than the royals really. That's I think 
That's I think true. They are the people who are making more decisions that we vote for, even though they are elected. And I wondered if anybody had anything particular that they wanted to say as a response to any of Annie's paintings that they'd like the group to hear. Anyone got an opinion about um, yeah, my favourite is the Queen. Mm. Definitely, it's one stay off is a tight one, and she just looks really, you know, she's not burdened by state affairs or royal problems or screw ups. She's just having a good time. Most of the time, she looks like she's got a pineapple on her really. <laughs> Do you think she's kind of had a bad life? Because she has that thing about the royals, don't you? People say the Queen, you know, I'd like to be Queen. She must have it great, and then other people say, Oh no, it must be terrible because you've got all these. Um, well, she sacrificed, she sacrificed her children to um, to the life of a royal. Because and that's another one for you, Annie, later. <laughs> you heard it there. Sacrifice, the Queen sacrificing her children to the lion of royalty. She was so keen to get the child <laughs> married to a, an acceptable bride that um, you didn't take note of really what was actually happening. I don't think you can blame the mother in but that's her primary well, purpose as a it? queen, isn't it? It's just to ensure the succession, <laughs> and you all got screwed up. Yeah, so the pressures are on. Yeah. The game is a big game, isn't it, to play? Like, are we going to survive or are we not going to survive? As royals, you know, you could play the royal survival game. In Queen Victoria, she um, there was a big uh, Republican surge, I think, was it? when. Uh, after her uh, husband died. Albert died, and um, she went to, uh, to recluse. She went to be a recluse for about ten years, and was it 70, 1870 or 1860? Uh, but anyway, the royals were really not popular at that time, and the newspapers. We think Victorian time. They loved the royals. That ten years, she was like it was sort of te seemed to be teetering on the verge of whether we're going to become a republic or not. It must have been the sixth. Sorry, the dates are not right. But then um, Disraeli came in, who was the conservative leader who loved, Vic he was very good at handling Victoria and brought her out of um, reclusion. And when they're in the news, it seems they're really popular. I guess they were really pleased with, um, with uh, you know, Meghan and um, Harry. Oh. Harry! <laughs> Meghan and Harry. They must have been like so pleased, you know, because, I mean, uh, they've just been the news story. Does anyone want to say anything about Meghan and Harry? What? I know you love the woman more than the man. You love the woman more than the man? No, you know it's more. Oh, I know. I know a lot more. I'm more familiar. I'd like to ask Annie about... Yes. I'd like to hey, ask Annie about that painting of Harry. This painting of Harry? Yeah, okay, let's talk about yeah. this. What's, what's, What's it about? Yeah, what inspired you? What do you think? What do you think? It's, um, it's after a Sunday afternoon at La Grande Jatte by Syrah, which the original shows loads of people on a Sunday afternoon just lounging around with, some people say, too much recreational time. And you could say that about some of the royals who don't have uh, an actual real job to do. <coughs> what do they do? And in his youth, he was known for a lot of hard partying, yeah. uh, not saying too much about what he got up to. So I thought, well, I'm going to do him, you know, no trousers on, drunk. Yeah, I'm kind of re referring to the hard partying Harry, but I did it at the time that he was just about to become a father. You see, when he's trying to be a bit more respectable and sort of growing up. Um, so that's what it's about. Yeah. Can I add on to that? What's what's happening with his legs? Because they, they seem very funny shapes and they're uh, <laughs> very bendy. And well, I'd uh, be careful what you say about his legs because the yeah. man who did a super pose for me, not mentioning any names there, Mike, is uh, in the audience. Okay. And it was quite a difficult pose to hold, wasn't it, Mike? It was. <laughs> your legs at 90 degrees. And I was shaking like a shooting dog for part time. What? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I know. I can now look at you, Mike, and I can imagine that Harry is you, because now we're having a better time with this painting. But um, it's a very, um, yes, it's a, it's a very provocative pose. It's a very, um, yeah, I think that, that whoever's here is getting a good view of Harry. You've <laughs> 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 chosen a very, uh, yeah, a very um, respectable view of this particular pose.
it's like the opposite to how they want us to see them, which is being well behaved and very proper, and just the whole time I'm just trying to take that apart a bit and saying, look, you know, it's not really like that. And then you just like push it to an extreme. So having that pose is quite an extreme pose. Taking the royal's trousers off, you know, because they're human. <coughs> yeah, pointing out that they're they're just sort of human like the rest of us and they, they do things that we all do. But it's it's got its entertainment because because they so want you to take them seriously and see them sort of on a pedestal. So there's all that room for uh, the humour when you take them off. Yeah, I think so. This is the thing about the royals as well, is because they have this uh, position and they are presenting themselves as not human, but obviously they are human. So we are obsessed as, um, I guess, as consumers of media. Not saying the people in this room are, but generally. If we are obsessed with the royals. The, the figures say it. Um, they are, an, in a way, they're an old celebrity that um, has been replaced by celebrity. But they're still keeping their own um, with the um, with contemporary celebrities, even to the extent of bringing celebrity into their family, as in uh, Meghan and uh, Harry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to hope they stay together, Meghan and Harry, because my painting is like caught in a in a time zone, mm. like of when they were together. Mm. But even if they don't, still it refers to that time when they when they first got married. Yeah. Well, you don't want to. What do you do with your wedding pictures when you split <laughs> up? I mean, it's exactly. a great problem. Hey, did somebody want to ask something? Hey. Yeah, so I've been looking at that uh, painting with Churchill. So is that just general Tudor garment, or is that Henry VIII? Which is another royal. I say it's Henry VIII. It is. It's, it's, it's a famous, go on. No, it's it's a famous it's painting of Henry VIII. I don't know who inspires it. Holbein. Really, yeah, so it's Holbein. an absolute... Every, it's a famous, really well-known, widely, widely shown painting by Holbein, and that's how everybody sees Henry VIII as this sort of very large-than-life character. And so Anne has put Churchill's head on him. It seems appropriate. It's a contest. It? Yeah. It's too well because he was he was really a grand figure who personally I quite admire, and I'm just over grandiosing him by elevating him to a position of royalty even though he's not and I felt that uh, Henry VIII was a big stature and mm. that they there was a parallel there to, to draw on and then sort of sticking with the cigar when he's in Henry VIII clothes it's like muddling things up and it's got the humour itself. The original is worth seeing it's in the Hampton Court Palace quite an imposing Painting. Yeah, really, and well, Holbein is amazing. But I think it's really interesting because it's, it's theatrical as well, and the royals are a theatre. They're um, providing a theatre. Even when they try not to provide a theatre, they really do. In some other countries, the royals have become much more ordinary in a way. But we, in this country, they have stayed as very theatrical figures. And I, I think this is really good because it's like Shakespearean as well, you know, so that's... Uh, because, you know, it's Shakespearean times, is it not? Drawing, oh, well, a bit later, Elizabeth, but we were, the plays are about uh, this, very much related to this period. He's, he's like first staff, it's a, and Churchill was a very theatrical politician. Yes. So, yeah. So, really, I don't want to keep you too much longer, because I think, um, yeah, we should of enjoy the work. I'd like to know if you want to tell me which, what you think about any of the particular works. I'd like to think about the issues that come from each one or the backstory that might come from the different pictures because these are scenes with people that relate to what we live with on the television and well it's the internet now but through the media uh, like it or not this is what we've got. So, what do you think? So why did you paint Trump on the tank? Oh. Sorry, draw him on the tank. Boris. 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 Oh, yeah. Why did I paint Boris? Yeah, why, why is he on the tank? Um, good question, because I was originally going to do Boris um, st still in a little skirt and everything. I was going to do him on, on his bis a bicycle or as a sort of an acrobat on a bicycle. But once he prorogued Parliament, I thought, you know what, Sky needs a tank, forget the bicycle. Because the tank being, you know, 
it's like a personality, I'm just going to push my way through, regardless of what you all think. And so it's, it's an expression of, of how I see this personality. Because it's funny. To me, it also re um, references the, the, all the images we got from the Iraq war, I have to say. Right. Because um, I saw, because uh, as a media professional who sees a lot of video and saw a lot of video from that period, there were so many people standing on tanks that I saw um, from the media of that particular <coughs> time. I, I can't get it out of my mind. It's because when you put the position of someone doing something in a way that you've seen before, just the physical, and that's the thing about painting, it gives you a visual reference, it's not just an intellectual reference. You see an, an image and you think, oh, I saw something like that, like, you know, the, I think sometimes of the, I don't know, the Sistine Chapel or the Renaissance painting, because of the angles and the, the mm -hmm. movement and the sky behind it. So I'm making connections like that, and I, I haven't really said this, but this is something that I think your paintings really do, is, they bring together those, those images that might be suggested by the paint, by the mise-en-scene, by the, yeah, what's actually in front of your eyes. Hmm. And I have to say also the scale, uh, and the scale and the ambition of your work, because it is, um, these are big paintings, they're, they're ambitious paintings, and they're big, and you pull them off for me. So. Thank you. Probably not quite as big as Tiepolo. <laughs> not quite as big as Tiepolo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.